Good afternoon. Welcome to King. I'm Carrie Salvatore. I'm the Director of Admission and Financial Aid. This is my 10th year here and the first time we have ever had snow at Open House. And it's very difficult for me to say that word this time of year. But we're thrilled to have you here. Uh, coming in behind me is a small portion of our upper school choir and they're going to start us off this afternoon. seasonal with the snow. Great, and we have one other piece of entertainment. This is our 150th year, our sesquicentennial year. Um, the school is celebrating our 150th anniversary, and in light of that, we have our 150th video. How can we best serve students with a combination of these three schools? Each time we've added another school, that's been the question. Well, Haywood brought to the table a dedicated interest in girls' education. King brought the male point of view. Thomas brought to the table the world around them. Each of the schools at their time contributed something. I don't think anything was lost in combining. Only gain. It's still all about kids and their individual becoming. We have 700 kids in this school. Each one of them is really pretty different from the next. Knowing them very well is not enough. Knowing them cognitively, understanding where they are developmentally is what sets us apart. So being a school that works for those kids because we value what they are as individuals, as learners, as community citizens, as artists, as athletes, it's all incredibly important and not an easy thing to do. We are not thinking of education as a simple thing. One, two, three, one, two. King has really helped me through my first year. At the end of the day, I have some free time and I don't want to just sit home and do nothing. I want to go out and help people. I want to give back as much as I can and all the times that they've helped me, I want to help them. If you have something that you're interested in, just never be embarrassed about it. Everyone here will accept you for who you are and there will always be someone who you can relate to. You'll probably learn something that you didn't know before, learn a way to fix something, learn a way to make something more efficient. Being excited to learn something new, it's going to be really important. In order to really strive and be a part of society after you leave King, you're going to need to have some sort of global awareness. You know, we learn about all these different places and we talk about issues concerning the world in a lot of classes actually. Learning about them in class is an amazing step, but like the, the trips are like a step further. They're really bringing you 
to yeah. experience because you can the like, rest of the world that we wouldn't see be able it. to see. So it's going to be like an opportunity to create a bond that you're going to remember throughout high school. It opens your eyes. It's always been all about the individual. And of course, now that grew out of a group of students that we had early on who were real winners in the very beginning. That grew into what King does now almost for every kid. The school's strengths now are the breadth and quality of the educational experience. I think this is really a golden age for King when thinking about everything the school has accomplished, not just in the last 15 years, but in 150 years. This school has made it through incredible ups and downs, world wars, the depression, and now is in really its finest hour. This is a wonderful place for children to grow up. This is a place that has the values, that has the virtues, that has the caring commitment, that provides a community that is really healthy for kids to grow up. So once again, welcome. Why King? Why are you all here? We are a school for ambitious, motivated, and talented students who want to thrive in a rigorous and challenging academic program. We want students to be in a place where they're going to have incredible opportunities in and out of the classroom in a unique culture. And you're going to hear more about this from our students. But first, you're going to hear about all of this from our head of school, Tom Main. Thank you, Carrie. That is a, a great video. That was a great job by the choir. Um, the video we, we, we really enjoy. It gives you a, a flavor of the, um, the school so, so quickly. Um, and I don't know if you saw the caption, but the, um, the woman who spoke at the beginning and the end, there, there are two that sort of narrate it, um, Sue Cesar, and then I do, do a little bit. Um, but um, Sue Cesar is really the legendary head of school here, was the head for 25 years and did a wonderful, wonderful job with the school. Worked here for over 40 years, um, went here in one of, to one of our predecessor schools beginning in the 30s, I believe. Um, her, her husband was a King graduate. Um, she's got one grandchild in the school now, had a grandchild that graduated several years ago. Um, her two sons went here, and one just finished a tenure as chairman of the board of trustees. So the Cesar family is certainly deeply enmeshed in the place, but that's a good, good example of how uh, connected the school is in, in, in so many ways to Stanford and, and, and the greater community. As we go through this 150th and, and, and we research ourselves, so to speak, it's, it's fascinating to see how deeply ingrained we are in the fabric of Stanford and southwestern um, Connecticut in, in, in particular and, and the deep and rich history that, that we have really that, that is quite amazing. And, and I hope um, as you all continue your journey learning about us, you'll have an opportunity to, to, to learn about a lot of that. So, <clears throat> on to the business part of my presentation. Uh, welcome, it's great that you're all here. Um, if I haven't met you or if you didn't hear the introduction, my name is Tom Main. I'm the school head here. It's my 14th year in that particular role. Um, it's actually my 21st year working at the school. Um, I came here right out of college and worked as a teacher and a coach for, for seven years and then went elsewhere for 12 years and, 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 and came back. My sister, I did not go to the school. My sister graduated from the school in, in the early 80s. And so I have a particular lens into the place which covers um, both a long period of time and, 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 and different angles which I think is particularly helpful to me. I'm also the parent of two King graduates, um, both doing extremely well. And there, there's something um, that, that you can only appreciate about the school when your kids have finished and they're, and they're moving on. And I certainly have that appreciation. Um, and, and, and I have an eighth grade daughter, which I think I appreciate every day. But it's a little more challenging than appreciating the graduates. Um, there are a few themes um, that I'd like to touch on as, as, I, as I talk briefly here. I'm reminded constantly that I must be brief. Um, so uh, just a couple of themes as I, as I try to get you a little closer to what we are as a school, um, things that I'd like you walking away with. The, the first is the theme of, 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 of academic strength. 
really, the school is an incredibly high-powered academic institution. It's what we want to be. Um, we want our kids to work hard. Um, we, don't, we don't apologize for that at all. We, we intend for it to be challenging um, to each kid wherever they are in, 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 their, in their own spectrum, but we are extremely challenging. Um, and we've developed tremendously over the, 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 the last 10 years, I think. Um, and that's one of the, the three things I want to say about the academic strength of the school. Um, we are continually developing. Uh, so we have at least twice the AP offerings in the high school that we had 10, 10 or 15 years ago. Um, but we develop in many other ways. Um, a good example of that is our uh, computer science program. We did not have a computer science curriculum four years ago. We're in our third year of a computer science program right now. We have eight electives per semester that we offer in the high school. Fascinating electives, all sorts of programming electives, creating um, iPhone apps, um, all sorts of um, really interesting electives that kids are taking. And um, that goes all the way down to the lower school. Um, so people that are looking at our middle school, there are programming courses in the middle school. And actually, you're not looking at the lower school, but in the lower school, there are progr programming courses that loop from the lower to the middle and then in, in, into the upper. Good example of how we're developing on, on a regular basis. I would say that five years ago, we were well behind in the computer science space. I would say this year, we're well ahead in, in that regard. And we've got the ability to make those sorts of moves when we see something that we think is important. Second thing I would say about our academic strength is, is just the faculty. We have a superb faculty. Uh, Will is going to talk a little bit about the faculty later on, and, and he does a much better job than, than I ever could. Um, but I, I, will, I will say that we have a wonderful faculty, and, and for the following reasons. Uh, number one, they are deeply knowledgeable about the subjects that they teach, which I think is a qualifier. You have to be that in order to be here. Um, number two, they're true intellectuals, and number three, they are truly experts in learning. So they understand learning. And so they're able to take their knowledge of their discipline and connect with kids because they understand how kids learn. And we do a lot to make sure they're in that particular space. And, and then finally, because they really love and enjoy kids. And, and I think that's actually the first qualifier for being a great teacher. You just got to love being around kids. So the constantly developing curriculum, the faculty, and then third, we have a personalized program, uh, which actually makes it harder because we know where you're good and we're going to push you there. We know what you do well and we're going to push you there. We know where you have challenges and we're going to make sure you address those challenges. But there's a whole framework for how we personalize and it's an important thing to understand over time as you get to know us a little bit better. Um, and, and, and often hear, people hear the word personalized and they think, well, that's, that's going to be perfectly tailored for my child. It's perfectly tailored to make your child work harder and that's what we are trying to do and gain more out of, out of their native ability. Ability. The second thing I would talk about um, is our culture. We, 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 we label it a culture of respect, civility, and service. It's incredible, incredibly important to what we are and what we do. And really, everything that happens here happens cradled in, 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 in that culture. A very good example that you'll hear about, again, from, from our students um, is that two or three years ago, we went through an all-school process of coming up with the virtues of character that were most important as the foundation, the bedrock of this, this community. And we came up with four, and we really work hard to live those virtues. Perseverance, kindness, respect, and integrity. You'll see those words on walls. You'll hear kids talking about them. If you go to advisory during the day, you'll hear people talking about these particular words. We really do not take our culture for granted. And a culture is an incredibly important thing in an institution. Third. Access. School like ours has to provide a lot of access, whether that is to service opportunities, to travel opportunities, to drama opportunities, to athletic opportunities. Um, we will often have our um, directors, if there are more kids than, than are evident in a cast, um, in a script trying out for a particular cast, we'll have people, we'll have our directors write more parts in so that there'll be more, more um, parts available to kids because we want everybody to have a chance. Um, when we have tons of kids trying out for a volleyball team or a basketball team, way too many to house in a varsity and a JV, we'll have a varsity, a JVA, and a JVB because if somebody is a freshman and they want to play volleyball, they should have an opportunity to play volleyball and we shouldn't have hard cuts. We want opportunity. We want people able to take advantage of the opportunities around here. And then the, the, the last theme, um, if you have done your research and read our mission, and if you haven't yet, that's okay, you can go back and read it. Um, uh, the lead line of our mission is we prepare students to thrive in a rapidly changing world. I really like that line. Um, I think it's ambitious. I think it's a big swing of the bat. That's what I like to call it. Um, I think it's bold, um, and I don't think it's an easy thing to do well. Um, Obviously, in our traditional academic program, the critical thinking and the problem-solving skills that our kids um, acquire 
are, are very important to that. Um, but it has to be much more than that. And in our school, we have well-developed programs, pre-K to 12, in global education for the last couple of summers. We've sent over 70 kids to at least five different countries. Service learning, we do a tremendous amount in service learning. Multicultural ism and inclusivity, we do a tremendous amount of work in that space. Sustainability, we have a, a very strong sustainability program which is growing each day. Um, and we actually have a department of innovation and media literacy. So those are five departments. And you can look at a lot of schools and they will have a lot to say about what they do in those spaces. And they'll have a lot of really impressive um, uh, language on their, on their websites. But when you come to our school, you'll see an infrastructure underneath each one of those tags. And you'll see human resource allocated to that. Each one of those programs has a director who manages that particular program. And those programs cross all the divisions and touch all of the departments. And that is really a, a good example of our school putting our money where our mouth is in terms of a lead line of our mission statement. It's interesting to ask schools. It's a great mission. How do you do that? In particular, how do you do that? What's different about your mission? And how do you do that? Schools should have answers. So at the end of the King Education, um, those are my themes, at the end of the King, King Education, uh, w w what is the result? Uh, I think the best result is what I have right now, which are happy adjusted kids, one doing well in college, and one having just graduated from college and doing really well and having a job and doing really well in, in the working world. And, and certainly that, that's incredibly important. Most of what, what, what is out there is, as a graduate is very hard to quantify. Healthy human development is hard to measure, right? It's hard to quantify it. You know it when you see it, it's right there. You know exactly how your kids have, have grown and how they've improved and, and how they've matured, um, but it's very hard to measure. One simple way to measure it is college. I don't want you to get all excited over the whole college process. I don't want you to worry about it too much. But I do want you to know that if, if you come to a school like this, um, the end result is a strong re re result. We have a very sophisticated college counseling department, so you're going to get very good advice um, early on. More importantly, you're going to have the academic training to present the sort of profile that will make a difference, and hopefully you are going to have the options um, that, that are right for you when you're heading off. For us, those are very good options. Uh, if you look at the 3,500 or so colleges and universities in the country, generally about 60 of them are categorized as, as um, most competitive by Barron's, about 60 of the, which is 1% um, less. Um, my math is not good. Um, and um, generally, 40 to 50% of our kids will be accepted into those institutions. Um, and the next band is just about 100. And these bands are like accordions. They go up five, down five, depending on, on, on given years. About 100 of our kids, about, about, about 40 to 50% of our kids will, will, will get into highly competitive colleges. So that's year in and year out, 85 to 95% of our kids will go to one of the top two bands, which is really impressive. And, and we like the fact that our kids have great options and that they're options that are right for them. Um, so they've looked at different sorts of schools and they've found the sorts of schools that are right for them. And that's an interesting tightrope to walk, right? You know, we like the sticker on the car. It makes a, it, we're so proud when our kid gets into a wonderful college. We also want to make sure it's the right place for them so they can go and thrive for four years and be ready for, for the world after that. And finally, I want, to, I want to give you a few things I'd like you to expect if, if you end up here in the fall. You're at the beginning of a, next fall. You're at the beginning of a process, and, and you'll be here or you'll be elsewhere. Um, but if you're here, what, what should you expect? Independent schools are, are unique in that we're accountable to ourselves, and so we get to create our own expectations. And, and I think, you know, some people think, well, that must be wonderful. I think it's a burden because you have to think really hard about what you want to be, and then you have to live up to that, right? And, and so um, here's what I would expect you to expect should you land here. Um, and a little bit of this will be repetitious. Um, but number one, academic excellence. We will challenge our students, your children, and demand the very best of them in the classroom. Um, and sometimes that'll be hard, and sometimes it'll be stressful, but we will do that. Um, you can expect us to be focused on the education of the whole child. Our, educa our educational excellence goes beyond the classroom, and every interaction and everything that comes out of work that they do here is a part of the educational excellence here. We do so much, as I've referenced, global studies, travel, service learning, um, the learning that goes on on the stage or on the field or on a basketball court. That's really important learning, and it really is critical to what our kids go through when they're here, and we're committed to that comprehensive educational excellence. You should expect that. Personalized attention for your child. 
you should expect that. We'll discover their strengths, we'll understand their challenges, and we'll approach them in a demanding way, but informed by our knowledge of them as cognitive beings, and that's incredibly important. You should expect thorough preparation for excelling at the most selective colleges and life beyond, and life beyond. You should expect regular communication with you, both proactive and responsive. We see, see you as partners in this process. It's very important that you partner with us, that we reach out to you uh, when, we, when we need something, and that you reach out to us when, we, when you need something. Um, you should expect diversity and inclusivity to be core to this particular institution and a very central part of what we do. You should expect a community that is safe, a place where kids are comfortable and at ease, and that's actually not to be underestimated. Just the fact that when you drop your child off, they are comfortable and at ease and skip into the, into the, into the building, and generally the skipping ends at about grade six, but skip into the building is, is very, very important because kids that are not safe and comfortable and at ease do not learn. And you should expect that we will focus on character and the development of character and that that will be important to us as children grow up in our midst. We will focus on that. So some clear themes. I hope that gives you a sense of what we're all about. I am thrilled that you're here today. It's, it's always one of the great times of year when I, when I see a group that is, is beginning the journey of getting to know us. Enjoy today and we hope to see you all again. Thank you very much. one of our two student experts, Sarah Hamoud. Hello, my name is Sarah Hamoud and I am in grade seven. I transitioned, to, I transitioned to King last year and it was definitely the right choice. The first thing I noticed was the warmth of the students. Students treat one another with respect and kindness. My first days here were very easy. Everyone was very nice and welcoming. They made me feel like I have been at this school my whole life. I love King because of my friends and classmates and most importantly because of my teachers. I know I can talk to any of my teachers at any time and if I have a question and I can't find my teacher, there is always another teacher to, around to help me, like my advisor. We meet with our advisor every morning for 10 minutes. The advisor is someone we can go to if we have any questions or who is just there for us. The classes here are great. I take history, biology, English, math, robotics, which is where we learn how to build robots, art, choir, and French. The courses here are challenging, but they are not overwhelming. Outside of the classroom, we have so many opportunities. In sixth grade, we have advanced PE, which is where we play sports, but not on a competitive team. In seventh and eighth grade, we get to play team sports each season where we compete against other schools. This fall, I am playing soccer, and it is so much fun to go play, against other, play games against the other schools. You have a lot of other choices for sports, like volleyball, football, field hockey, cross country, tennis, squash, hockey, basketball, golf, so softball, and lacrosse. This winter, I hope to play basketball. In middle school, students have an opportunity to participate in choir and band as well. All students join clubs in the middle school. Some of the club choices include dance, golf, 3D puzzles, health and wellness, math team, junior debate, model UN, and iPhoneography, my favorite. Students meet with their club once during an eight-day rotation. I also like how we go on field trips. At the beginning of each school year, all the grades in the middle school participate in community building and grade bonding activities. Other, our eighth graders go to Washington, D.C. for four days. Sixth and seventh graders attend adventure ropes courses and other team building activities. Last year, we went to Sound Waters to learn about invasive species, which we were studying in science. It was so much fun, even though we were learning. We also traveled to New York to see The Lion King on Broadway as part of our performing arts program. Middle school students put two plays on each year. This year's fall play is Triple Trouble, an exploration of Shakespeare. I am excited to hear what the spring musical will be. There is an opportunity for everyone to get involved in the play, whether it is on stage or behind the scenes. 
Finally, I want you to know that King is a great place to be. Everyone works hard, everyone has fun, and most importantly, everybody is happy. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Will Nellis, uh, and I'm this year's high school class president. This is my eighth year at King, um, and I've been here since fifth grade, and I am more than pleased to be with you all today. Uh, a lot of you represent some of the future students of King, and that really excites me. Um, as a student, I love to be able to see Open House grow every year because it only affirms my belief that we are prospering as an institution. We offer a variety of different kinds of things at our school that I think will suit almost everyone in this room. Now, one of the primary focuses of our school is unquestionably our dedication to academics and academia itself. I've been able to learn so much from our classrooms, but more so, I've been able to learn how to learn in these classrooms. Um, the way our academic system is set up is made for students to find prosperity. Um, as technology thrives, it opens many of the doors for a school like us to take advantage. The best part about learning here is that you can work with the people who open these doors for you, and you can walk through them with them. Now, over the last three years, we've introduced applications like Final Sight, which is like an online planner, and numerous Google products that have made sharing work and collaborating as easy as a click of a button. But along with technology, our academics are always growing. I often wish I wasn't taking an AP class so that I could take something like anthropology, marine biology, meteorology, or even the study of comic books. Um, these are just some of the things that we are doing this year, but just as the upper school grows, the middle school does too. Um, as the upper school grows in its STEAM initiative, that would be science, technology, engineering, arts, and math, the middle school is also doing the same. But in high school, if you would like to have a class that we do not offer, you can actually create your own independent study with a teacher. Uh, a friend of mine is doing behavioral economics with our AP economics teacher. It's pretty absurd, but it's up to him. Um, the classes here span far and wide, um, and our teaching staff is absurdly skilled. Um, the one sole thing that makes working so hard as a student worth it is that on the other end of that math packet that you're handing in or that physics lab, there's a teacher there on the other end that is willing to work with you and happy to work with you in any ways possible. Um, my teachers are personable, every single one of them. Because for me, academics have been the best part of my King experience, and I would not trade what I've learned, how I've learned it, and who I've met learning it in a million years for anything. Um, but what runs so concurrently with our academics are all the activities outside of the classroom. Now, personally, I started doing musicals in fifth grade and never seemed to stop because it was just something I did, and I'm, I'm doing one this year as well. Um, my freshman year, I was lucky enough to get the lead role lead male role in Hairspray as Link Larkin. But the most fun part of the performance was the production and just building the play itself. As a freshman, I was able to meet students from every single grade and from every single social group and from almost all the parts of the school. Now what I'm saying here is that performing arts just happened to be what pushed me over the boundary of being new in high school. And what I told the freshmen this year at orientation was to find something. And by this, I mean find something that you can be extremely passionate about. Find something that you can wake up in the morning and say, oh my gosh, this is something I cannot wait to get to school and do. Now this could be a sport, this could be a club, it could be band, it could be choir. Now the opportunities outside the classroom are purely endless. I'm lucky enough to say that I am head editor of our school's literary magazine, but also a member of the math team here at King, um, and our club base is growing. More and more students are taking their own initiatives to build what they want to do in our school. And if there's something that you have or something that you do and you want to do it, you can absolutely do that here. But lastly, what I think, King, what I think makes King so interesting is the culture that exists in the hallways. Being a decently small school makes academics and extracurriculars present almost immediately everywhere we go. Academics are no question the language of the school. I always find myself discussing classes, tests, quizzes, scores, tests, everything, so on with my friends every day. We're always discussing what we seem to happen or occur in clubs or even in clubs of our own. Um, the school culture is strongly, strongly built off of the King virtues, which were mentioned. Kindness, respect, integrity, and perseverance. All four are what we try to apply to our lives every day here at King, and I can firsthand say that I absolutely love it. I would be missing something if I did not also mention that this year is our 150th sesquicentennial graduating class, and I am so lucky to be a part of that. And while I can pronounce sesquicentennial, I really can't spell it, it's misspelled on my paper. Um, if anything, this milestone has come at a perfect time. 
We are furiously thriving in academics. We are overflowing with clubs and involvement. Being a part of the King community was probably the best thing, no, absolutely the best thing that ever happened to me. And I hope it's the best thing for you too. Thank you. Terrific. So today is just a quick glimpse of King. You're looking at us on a Sunday afternoon. We do not have students in class. All of our students are informal. You're getting a slightly different feel, but we look at today as a teaser, a taste, an appetizer, and want you to come back for more and actually come in and see school in session. You'll get a sense of the true culture and spirit of the school. This coming week is Spirit Week as, I, as we lead into homecoming, and you will all have an invitation to homecoming in your packets. Please join us next Saturday. We have sporting events and all sorts of activities beginning early, going all day long. At the moment, it looks like a nice day, and we hope no more of that S word in the forecast. Um, it's looking like 60. We'll take that S word, and life will be good. Um, but would love to have you join us for that or come to our middle school play. That's what part of the um, stage is here. Um, the more that you can come on campus and see us in action, the more you'll get a great sense of who we are and all that we do. Um, so today, while you're here, please ask questions. Our experts, our students, and our faculty are here for you. Um, so when you leave us and go to our upper school academic center, you'll see faculty by department. Please ask them all the questions that you want to ask, no matter what grade you're looking for, they're there to help you. For those of you in middle and upper school, you are looking at a school and you're looking at a top academic institution to give you the best preparation for college and beyond. Well, what we want is we want students who want more and who can do more in the classroom, in the art studio, on the stage, in the playing field. We want families who want more for their children and we want families who want to be involved. Now, a couple of housekeeping notes. We'd like you to remember that our application deadline is December 15th. We would prefer for you to apply early, like tonight would be a really good idea. Um, we already have over 100 applications in and our spaces are already filling, which looking at my calendar, it's already crazy and hard to believe. So please apply early. Parents, all you need to do is part A, filling in your name, filling in your address, that begins the application process. For students, you can wait on your student questionnaire, and parents will also give you a little leeway on your questionnaire. We want you to take some time and think about it, but we don't want you to take too much time on the beginning part of the application itself. So please get that in as early as possible. Um, those of you who are student athletes, we also have a student athlete questionnaire on our website, and we would ask that you complete that as well. That enables us to have some of our coaches reach out to you and answer any questions you may have about our athletic activities. For those of you, we kind of shuffled in here really quickly, closer to 2.30 or 2.40. If you have not yet registered, please do so before you leave. We also want to make sure that everybody grabs a cookie or an apple and then all the goodies we have up on the tables before we go. I'm terribly sorry we did not have hot apple cider. We were not thinking of the temperature today. But we have lots of stuff for you to grab and take with you. Um, if you have already completed a tour, the next step will be for you to go to our academic center where you get to meet with our faculty. If you have not yet had a tour, we would ask that when you leave this building or when you leave this um, theater, we just ask you to step to the right and we have some tour guides available there. Again, please ask questions. We are here to help you. Please complete those applications and please be sure to give us a call if you have any questions after, the, after today. Thank you very much for joining us. We hope you enjoy the rest of the afternoon. Thank you.